My name is Bruce Berman. I'm the Director of Strategy and Communications for Save the Harbor, Save the Bay, and we're here um, for the Metropolitan Beaches Commission hearing. Before we start, I'd just like to just, uh, if you'll indulge me for one quick second, I'd like to introduce you all to Tani Marinovich, who's our new president at Save the Harbor, Save the Bay. Tani, I'm just going to come up and say hi. You can just. Um, she's going to be attending as many of the Beaches Commission um, hearings as we can. Will certainly be with us when we um, are at the State House. And um, and really, if in in a sentence, cares about clean water and access to the spectacular resources of the Commonwealth for kids and families. Um, and, and and I'm sure that although I'm going to miss Patty, no wait, I'm not. I'm still married to her. Um, we're we're very lucky um, to have Tani as our president. So thanks for being welcoming. Um, Senator Crichton and uh, Mayor McGee have indicated that they're 4.4 minutes away from here right now, and they'll be here shortly. So we're going to start um, this evening. Uh, but before I do, I'd also like to ask the members of the commission to please stand up. Some of them are standing in the back of the room as well. Um, and, and, and I'd like to, to, to ask you all to just briefly just introduce yourself and say what community you're from. And, and at the same time, if I could ask our, our, our chairman, um, Representative Rosalie Vincent from Revere, um, who along with Brendan are the co-chairs of the committee, to come on up and say hi. Just, just, just well, they're introducing themselves. We'll start with you. Come on. Yeah. Thank you all for joining us here tonight. Um, want to say a few words or just want to just please? I just want to say hello. Um, I'm Rosalie Vincent. I'm the host co-chair for the Metropolitan Beaches. And um, as you know, uh, Revere is America's first public beach. And I'm very proud to represent Revere. But I'm really here tonight to listen to all of you and to find out what is important to the people um, in the city of Lynn, in Nahant. So thank you. Um, and, and, and when the mayor and, 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 and the senator come, I'm sure that uh, we'll find a way to, to, to acknowledge them. What do I have to do to get this thing to move? All you got to do is click the left and right button. Left and right button. Unbelievable. I'd also like to – just – they're right here. Oh, my God. Watch this. Left. Does it change? No? Right. Good. Nice. Um, I want to give you a little bit of background um, about the, 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 the commission and, and what we've accomplished. Um, the commission was uh, created in 2007, conven reconvened in, in 13, and made permanent in 2015. It's chaired by uh, Senator Crichton and also by Representative Vincent, and, um, and its work is managed by Save the Harbor, Save the Bay. Their mission, the mission of the commission, is to conduct an annual review of the Commonwealth's public beaches that are owned by the Department of Conservation in Lynn, Nahant, Revere, Winthrop, East Boston, South Boston, Dorchester, Quincy, and Hull, and report on our findings and recommendations to the legislature, the administration, and the public. It's a list of the commissioners. We agree in many ways on the key findings and recommendations from, which we've heard from, from, from folks from Lynn and from all the other communities as a general principles. But this year, we're meeting in each of the communities to, to sort of do a reality check, to hear from all of you about the concerns that you have today. And I've already heard, I've had an earful um, already. Um, and, and, and that's good. Um, because unless we keep these issues top of mind, we're not going to find the resources um, and build the consensus that we need to address them. I think that there's a broad consensus that DCR needs more mon money. Uh, for staff, maintenance, equipment, management systems, et cetera. 
Um, you all should be pleased to know that the Department of Conservation and Recreation, that the governor in his budget recommended the first real increase in DCR's budget in a number of years, a couple million dollars. Also, a, a modest amount of increase for the for the, for the metropolitan beaches. I do expect uh, that uh, with some luck and hard work that the legislative leaders of the commission will also be able to um, persuade the governor um, and um, include other funds uh, to help us get our job done as well. Uh, I also think that, and you know, I know who's in this room, and I know you all agree that better beaches require free programming, whether it's in Revere, where the Sandcastle attracts more than a million people to the beach in a weekend, or whether it's at Red Rock concerts, which are just a, a, an incredible asset. I mean, with all due respect, Mr. Tucker, you should be commended for 15 years of service. Hey, Bob, they're applauding you. You want to hear it again? They're applauding you. We also think, and there seems to be a consensus among the commissioners, that increased efficiency from electronic payment kiosks could increase revenue for beach parking and parking lots. If that does happen, it's really important that the funds go to DCR to supplement their budget and not to replace the appropriations that they get. Um, it's also important that, 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 that those funds significantly be directed and invested in the beach community where they were raised, whether it's to help for public safety, uh, an ambulance on the weekends in Hull, or for other important um, facts. But, but the truth is that for too long, um, when DCR um, you know, finds a way to be entrepreneurial like we asked them to, uh, and raise some money. We just cut their budget by that same amount, so they're not making any headway. And we need to try to fix that if we can. Um, I think that everybody agrees, especially folks that just, Senator, welcome aboard. Senator Crichton just came in. Um, better connections are important, and, 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 and water quality improvements and additional testing are still needed on several beaches. Anybody know any beach that that might be true about? And I'm, we'll talk about that in a minute, if you don't mind. Um, and finally, um, and this I hope it doesn't sound as self-serving as, as, as I just realized it might, the commission plays an important role, both in hearing from the public and bringing these issues to the legislature, typically in late May and early June when the budget discussions are coming to the forefront. And as a consequence, um, we're proud of what we've accomplished. Um, We've had 25 public hearings at the State House and in the nine neighborhoods uh, since 2007. The Commission's also issued two public reports in 20, 2008 and in 2014, and we will be issuing another major report again this year. Um, we've secured $20 million in the environmental bond bill for the next phase of capital improvements to the beaches. DCR has done a, a remarkable job um, uh, addressing um, what, it, in essence, are chronic um, under investment in, in, in maintenance and capital stuff. They've, they've, they, they've made big improvements. There's still work to do. And I know at least two people in the room were prepared to tell me where we should start. Um, we've also secured $20 million to help communities address persistent pollution problems that close some area beaches. It's important to point out that the funds have been authorized and not appropriated yet. And um, as we look at the problems that we're facing in water quality um, in Quincy, and, and also in Lynn. Um, it may be time um, to up our game and see if we can move those dollars. Um, in 2019, uh, the commission was able to secure $1.235 million for staffing and maintenance of the metropolitan region's public beaches, including $190,000, which Save the Harbor, Save the Bay gave away to local groups to support free programs on the beach. We don't get to keep the money. I wish we did. Actually, I don't. I can't think of a better investment. The amount of leverage that we get from the kind of investments that we've made in the sand sculpting competition or in the concert series in, at Red Rock um, or at other events, it's just amazing. And the energy that it brings to a community, these are real important things. And we're also, just for what it's worth, soliciting proposals now and we'll be making awards at the end of April. So if you have a great idea for a free program on the beach in Lynn, you should let us know and speak to Andrea about details about how you can get a fairly simple application um, to do that. Uh, in this year, the governor's recommended a modest increase to the budget and also uh, a modest increase 
um, to the Metropolitan Beaches line. Um, typically, for those of you who are connoisseurs of the budget process, the House will look at these numbers and raise them somewhat. The Senate may look at the numbers and raise them somewhat. Then the two bodies will confer, and they'll come to an agreement, and they'll present it to the governor. And the governor has the option of either um, doing nothing, in which case it becomes law, but he never does that, or uh, vetoing parts of it or approving it. You will be pleased to know that, um, that the governor has fully supported the budget, um, and, and, and we're really lucky to have a governor that understands, like uh, the legislature and like our mayors, that this is the Bay State, and we don't live here by accident, although maybe one or two of us do. We love it here. We love our beaches, and that's the, my big takeaway from these meetings. A couple of things. Last year, uh, you may have noticed that there was a, a dead whale on the beach in Revere. And, um, and, it, and I'll tell you with all um, honesty uh, that um, it, it, it first started out at um, Nantasket Beach in, no, sorry, um, in Cohasset. Um, and it was towed out to sea, and it headed like a torpedo on the wind and ended up on the beach in Revere. It could easily have ended up on the beach in Lynn. Um, and it was uh, a problem to dispose of it. And, um, and so, uh, in order to keep it, and, and, and ultimately it was buried on the beach in front of uh, the Blue Line adjacent to a residential neighborhood, which is not an optimal solution. On the other hand, uh, you know, the Department of Conservation and Recreations, you know, you know has every, and, and this just happened, we had this in, in Southie just a, a little while ago, um, um, you know, this is an unfortunately more frequently occurring occurrence. Uh, we had a dead porpoise on the beach. DCR does have a policy, and, and it works. Uh, we, we let them know about it. They sent a team, and they disposed of it. But a giant rotting whale carcass in the middle of the summer was a tax on everybody. So in, because we're concerned that it could happen again, um, the, um, the, the chairs of this commission um, have introduced an act that, would, that asks DCR to develop a policy um, in, a, in a fairly short time that'll prevent that from happening again. And now to the news. Don't take pictures of this because we're not going to release it till the spring when everybody's thinking about the, about the water. Um, if you look at the first column, the six-year average, um, this is a um, report card on water quality, which Save the Harbor, Save the Bay intro, um, releases our Beaches Science Advisory Committee releases um, in the spring every year based on the previous year's water quality results. And, 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 and as you will see, in, over the past five years, King's is consistently towards the bottom. If you look more deeply into um, the numbers, you'll discover that um, they stayed fairly consistent uh, but in um, 2017, uh, for the first time, Kings Beach uh, scored better than 90%, which is a good thing. It was also a very dry year. And we cautioned folks not to be too optimistic because it isn't always a dry year. And it, as, unfortunately, we anticipated in 2017, um, the numbers uh, went back down again. So there's marked improvement in water quality in 17. 18 was somewhat worse. As you'll recall, I know many of you were here at our last meeting, Save the Harbor, Save the Bay, um, undertook a study in partnership with our friends at, uh, at, at EEA um, and DCR um, to try to understand the causes uh, of the persistent pollution problems that continue to plague Kings Beach. And, um, and those of you who know and love the beach will not be surprised to know what they are. Swampscott and Lynn discharge a substantial amount of contaminated stormwater from a, a Stacy Brook culvert, and there are other discharge pipes on the beach. It's not like they decide to do it. It comes from your houses and my house if I was lucky enough to live in Lynn. And, and, and the communities have different challenges. It appears, based on our analysis, that 
the dry weather problems are caused in large measure by Swarm Scott. And it's likely that the work that they've undertaken has resulted in some improvement to the conditions in dry weather. But there's still more work to do. The wet weather problem primarily comes from Lynn, but not because they're particularly bad, but because it's a much bigger system with a lot more area. And so the volume of stormwater coming out of that pipe is pretty large. And, um, and so um, to address the problem in the short term and in the long term, um, in the long term, we'll go to that first, and, and, and there are those in this room who've made it fairly clear to me that they think that long term is too long. And I think we might all agree with that, but, but there's no finger pointing because these are complicated, older systems that require people to go house to house and to find illicit connections that weren't intentionally made and to rip up streets to fix them one at a time, which is expensive, inconvenient, and frankly, a lot of money for a community that's small like Swampscott or that's, you know, a, a gateway community like Lynn to pay with so many other options. Uh, in recent, you know, so in the, in the short run, we're working with DCR and, and Susan. Um, last year, we started the discussions late, not because of you, but because of Save the Harbor, Save the Bay, to talk about um, changes in the way that we flag and post on Kings Beach so that you guys will be able to swim with more safety and, um, and, and confidence. Parts of the beach are remarkably clean. Other parts of the beach are not. If you see kids jumping into the water at Stacy Brook, you should stop them. It's a problem. But if you go away from the brook, it's not as much of a problem, and certainly it might, in many cases, meet the federal standards. We may, instead of having one flag that reflects some complicated count of how many spots on the beach exceeded, we may want to have separate flags so that people know that on a hot summer day that you shouldn't go near the pipe but that you could go to either the north or the south or might be the east or the west end of the, it's east or west, end of the beach um, and, 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 and swim. Um, Senator, I don't, I don't know, Senator Crichton, I don't know whether, if you could come on forward. Um, and I, I know that, um, that Mayor McGee uh, is hoping to, to join us. Um, in recent years, both communities, Lynn and Swampscott, have made significant investments in improving their stormwater and their sewage systems. We, as I pointed out, um, have the commission um, secured funds in the bond bill. Um, I, I, Senator and I talked uh, this morning. Uh, do you want to talk yeah. a little bit about no, uh, it? First, sorry I'm late. Uh, there are a number of meetings right now around the city. Uh, I know uh, Representative Dan Cahill uh, wanted to attend, as well as Representative Lloyd Ehrlich, and uh, also want to recognize Pete Capano, State Rep from Westland, uh, this is what we have to do as politicians. First, I need to acknowledge everyone that's here, and then I'll answer your question, Bruce. Uh, so, Jared Nicholson from the school committee here as well. Uh, my co-chair, Rosalie Vincent, uh, for, representative from Revere. And I think that's it. Uh, great. So, oh, also, Tony Barletta, uh, Nahant Town Manager. And, sorry, Donald, Representative Donald Wong, uh, State Rep for Saugus and Lynn. Uh, so, uh, first, I just want to say thank you. Sorry I'm late again. Uh, this is... A very important meeting for our district, and I look out in the crowd, and I remember many of these same faces here when I first started as a staffer to Tom McGee, who was the chair of the commission back in 2006. And um, since then, all of your, your recommendations have been put, in, put into these reports that have not just ended up on some shelf collecting dust, but have influenced how we approach things with our budget. Uh, along with our legislative priorities and the bond bill that Bruce just referenced. I do have to give a shout out to uh, Tom McGee, who's a state senator, along with Bob Fennell and Steve Walsh, who were reps at the time, who were able to get uh, a significant amount of money in the environmental bond bill for, uh, to address this water quality issue. We've been able to continue that in subsequent bond bills, and it's a top priority now. We're working with the, the town and the city of Lynn to identify the costs and what their needs are, and we are uh, in contact with Secretary Beaton's office and the administration 
to uh, get some of these funds released. We know it's a huge concern. Every one of us goes down near that beach in the summer, and it's, it's a great thing that now the beach has been crowded summer after summer, and there are a ton of people enjoying it, but we need to make sure that that water is safe and that there's adequate markings, letting people know when and when they should not be swimming. Um, so I, I don't want to ramble on here tonight. I think the most valuable part of this uh, meeting tonight is when we have our breakout groups and to go into things in more detail. But uh, thank you so much, and just know that your input, even today I met with the, the chairman of Senate Ways and Means for our budget meeting, and we talked a lot about our beaches. Uh, thankfully, he has a staff member, I don't see him here today, that actually just moved to land down in our, our neighborhood, so we'll have at least one inside, a uh, little bit of inside help there. But thank you again, and uh, I'll turn it back to Bruce now. I, I just every time I, I, I come to, to these meetings and 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 and, and here and, and, and in Revere and, and in Hull last week and in Quincy last year I'm just struck by the uh, the, the, the thing that we all have in common here um, maybe there's more but the one that strikes me is that we all love our beach and the reason that we're here tonight is um, is because we want to make it better um, so there's some things that we can be pretty proud of um, the first, it, from my perspective, is the, the improvements that we've made um, to infrastructure, uh, to management, and maintenance over the past 15 years, uh, since we, what, 2008 to now, I don't know, for that 10 years. Um, but I'm particularly proud of the strides that we've made in free events and programs, and I think you should be too. Um, again, we already applauded, it'll go to his head, so let's not reward Tucker anymore. But there are people here who've given hundreds, thousands of hours, and frankly, a lot of money and a lot of resources to make sure that there's great things to do. Um, and, and DCR has been a terrific partner, finding ways to waive fees and to um, help support these activities, which all seem to happen at the same time on, um, on, 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 and, and really stretches their staff. Um, so I think it would probably be a, a good thing to just take a moment to acknowledge the great work that the men and women on the beach for DCR have done for us. That's three hearings in a row where DCR got some applause, and I have to say that 15 years ago that wasn't happening. And that's important, and that's because they care about these resources. You don't end up working for the Parks Agency because you don't love these resources. If you have any problems, talk directly to Susan. Um, I'm going to move from the general to the specific. Um, last year, the Better Beaches program funded um, programs for the Friends of Lynn and Hunt Beach, Girls Inc. of Lynn, and the Friends of Lynn Heritage State Park. Um, if you don't mind, um, I'm going to ask my friend uh, David Spillane, uh, who's been the lead consultant uh, for the Beaches Commission, the architect in many ways of the commission, to just run through the findings and recommendations um, from, um, from seven and, uh, unless you want me to rip through them right now. Okay, I'll do it. So in 2007, and this is one of the fascinating things, and we do have copies of this um, for, for, for folks. Um, in 2007, many of the issues that we were concerned about have been resolved by the time that we did our report in 2013. Um, but new issues had emerged. One issue, water quality, has continued to plague us. What's working? See, I was just trying to get him to do it because I couldn't read the tiny letters that were on the previous one. So Andrea, in her wisdom, helped make sure that I have big ones here to read. Um, it's, listen, Nahant Beach is an the best swimming beach in the region. Kings Beach, we have some problems. The landscaping at Red Rock, this is 2007. It's a great resource for migrating birds, great dune habitat. The summer concert series was excellent then, it continues to be. The policing is really good. In some communities there are concerns. This is not one of them. At the time, Ward Bathhouse was a nightmare. And if you want to go look at the pictures in the globe, you will be appalled. Uh, the causeway at that time was in terrible condition. 
Tonight, people are telling me that they think we should probably remove it. I'm guessing that isn't going to happen. Facilities weren't accessible at times when the public wanted them to do it. Maintenance was a problem. Of course, it may continue to be a challenge. Um, enforcement of dog rules. Actually, when you talk tonight, and if you write down that dogs are an issue for you, tell us whether that means you want more dogs or less dogs on the beach, because when we get home, it's not obvious. Um, I, I was at several beaches on my way up here today, and at this time of year, there's a lot of people that are uh, with their dogs um, on, you know, on the causeway and on the beach. Um, in the summertime, it, it can be a big problem for water quality as well. Um, sand. At the time we started this, DCR had one sand rake for the North Shore and one for the South Shore. And they didn't have sufficient trained operators to empty the trash barrels, um, to move the trash trucks. And the problem was fairly simple. They wanted to do the job. We were able to find um, additional resources uh, for them. The last one, I think, it's been totally resolved, right? There's no more algae. And, um, as you guys know, the Palel algae is a problem here. DCR has been over the past, since 2007, and with the help of Nick Gove and, and folks that are still at the agency and, and the folks in this, in this region and, and the leadership, has done a, a pretty good job of attacking the problem early in the season, which means that it's less of a problem later in the season. If you want, I'll explain the complicated science, but it multiplies on a log scale, which means that if you get it quick, it makes a huge difference. And if you don't, you have a huge problem. It's also expensive, frankly, to dispose of, and that means that DCR has to make tough choices about resources. I'm happy to say that in part because of the folks in this room, the friends of Lynn and Hunt, and the, the folks in rooms like this around, DCR understands what our concerns are, and the better they understand how important they are, the better they're able to address them and to make the case for the resources that they need. In 2014, We'd moved beyond. Remember Ward Bathhouse? You couldn't even go in there without being disgusted. And now we needed to have vendors there because people were actually going there. We needed pedestrian improvements and better street lighting. Dog waste and, frankly, um, dogs, I think, remain a concern, um, although perhaps less this year than, than two years ago. Uh, recycling. Um, is a great idea. Sometimes it's hard to accomplish, especially if there aren't bins and other things to do it. It would be good if there were bathrooms at Red Rock, or at least um, more bathrooms. And, 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 and there needs to be, or there needed to be, uh, repairs to, to the seawall and the stairs, because it's the only way to get to that beach, unless you want to jump or fly. Um, parking can be a problem at Nahant in the summer on a beautiful day. Is anyone surprised by this? Um, and I don't have an easy solution to it, um, but, but we all think that in all the communities that the resources that parking lots can raise should be invested in the beach where they're raised or at least in the metropolitan beaches. And certainly those funds should remain in DCR's budget and not be used to replace funds. I can't make it happen. But our legislative leaders and our legislative members can make the case. And with some luck, we can move in that direction. So before we go into the next part of the program, I'd like or to explain the next part of the program, and you can't get out of it this time by just going like this. Um, David Spillane of Goody Clancy, who is big-hearted, smart, able to synthesize and to build consensus better than anyone that I've ever worked with. He's been at every hearing since we started for free. He's helped put together the reports and helped us coordinate our strategies to bring these issues in front of the public. Um, and he's going to help us uh, again tonight. David. So I, I think if you've been part of these hearings before, you know what we're going to do now. Um, it, you know, we started these in, in 2007, uh, then in 2013, add six, 2019, maybe we'll be doing this in two, 2025. But 
almost all the information we've got and the things Bruce just talked about are things that came from these meetings. And most of them came from what people wrote on these sticky notes and the breakout groups you're about uh, to be in. So what we're going to ask you to do um, in a couple of minutes when you go to the breakout groups is you're going to be um, doing two things. We're going to ask you what's working well um, on, on the beach and spend about 15 minutes on that. And what we ask people to do is please write it down. You can talk about it. But what we found is if people write it down and they write it down with enough specificity, um, we capture those things and those really become the foundations of the report which we're going to be writing this year and that's the work we can act upon and move forward with. So the first thing is we're going to ask you in the group to spend about 15 minutes, um, grab some sticky notes, write down the things you think are working, we'll collect those up, we'll, we'll put them together. It doesn't matter if people have the same idea, we like to see that. Uh, because it tells us that's really something that's important that a lot of people are thinking about. When you write it down, again, it's really important to be specific. Sometimes people will have a comment about the beach, um, but it's not clear afterwards which part of the beach that's, that's about. Clearly there are different issues from you know, Kings to Nahant Beach. There are probably different issues on different parts of the beach. So if you've got something that's really specific, try and get as much of that down in paper as you can. So the first part is going to be about what's working, um, what's working well. The second 15 minutes, we're going to ask you to, to do the same exercise, but this time in terms of what needs, you know, what needs improvement. And again, um, helpful to know exactly when people write down parking on the sticky, we don't know tomorrow whether that's too much, too little, too expensive, too cheap, in the wrong place, not available when I need it. So please, again, as, as specific as you can. And then the third uh, piece is we're going to ask you, you know, what's missing? What other things would you really like to see that aren't here? And we, we've heard a lot of really creative thoughts, you know, over the years in these meetings about programs that aren't in place, you know, ideas people have, creative ideas for things that really could make uh, the beaches even better than they are today. So we're going to spend about 45 minutes um, you know, doing that in the groups. Uh, then what we'll do is we'll ask each of the groups to report out. Just give us some highlights and some of the things uh, you talked, and we'll see if, you know, each of the groups talked about the same things or you're really talking about, uh, you know, different things. What happens in these meetings, you know, there are probably 50 or 60 people here. Um, you know, if everybody filled out 10 sticky notes, we'd have 600 sticky notes. And that's going to be 600 ideas. And, and those really have been the things that have been the foundation uh, for the work uh, we've done. You know, when you come to these communities, um, you know, the people who use the beaches are the people who really are the experts about the beaches, uh, you know, about what you love about them, what needs improvement, and what's, you know, missing. So please just take the opportunity to, to, to help us in terms of structuring this next uh, report, which will be a foundation for what can happen over the next, uh, you know, five or six years. What happens when we're done writing our stickies? Well, I think what we're going to do is we're going to ask you know, somebody from each of the group to spend two or three minutes just presenting some of the highlights on each of these topics, what people loved, what needs improvement, uh, what's, what's missing. And uh, we'll get through all of that, and we'll have everybody out of here on schedule by, um, by 8 o'clock. So I think, anything else, Bruce? So I would just, uh, you know, make your way to the, um, the tables at the back. There'll, there'll, be, there'll be a facilitator in each of the groups that uh, can help you through the, the exercise. But again, please write it down. <laughs>
say out as far as the DCR and Save the Harbor, Save the Bay, as far as what they have tried to do throughout the years, as far as making that special spot more desirable for the many people that want to take advantage of it, both in the winter and the summer, as far as when you would expect to see people at the beach. As far as the clearing of the algae that they do early in the morning, it's spectacular, but it needs to be continued. And we are hanging on a cliff each year as far as funding. And last year, the cliff existed for a long period of time, less known for nothing. So that needs to hopefully change. What we uh, like we like to share the beach, and one of the ways it happens are the concerts by the friends, as far as sponsoring concerts for people from all over the North Shore. We have people from the Midwest. We have people from all over the world who come and are mesmerized by that beautiful scenery at the beach, and the music, the sunset, everything that goes with those concerts. We also have a special children's day, once a year. It's something fairly new that the French group has started. Sitting at this table right here, we have a biology teacher who brought up a number of things that need to be addressed. And one of them, what can we do as far as maybe even stopping the blooming of the algae that's actually polluting the beach that we love? So we need to attack resources that have not been attacked previously, as far as for our benefit. The bathhouse. The bathhouse has been redone, but it's not used as much as it should be. So we feel that there should be vendors that have access to that area, and also maybe educational programs in association and connecting with the beach and what you find in the tidal pools to, to benefit not just young people but older people as well that take those things for granted. They're very special. And it's part of life and living that's so important to all of us. Um, what we need to improve on, traffic, speeding, red lights for people to cross the street that drivers do not even acknowledge what on stop for. We need to have a hand on trucks that seem to use Linshaw Drive as a cut through with nothing in their way as far as stopping or preventing that from happening. And I don't know what can be done, but it's not a through way for trucks, and yet they're there, and they should be. Um, what else? We have a 
excited to be here today. I'm a Lynn Water and Sewer Commissioner, and I'm concerned about the beaches that I grew up on. And uh, Stacy Brook is a problem. So this filing I brought here, this is a public comments that I entered by collecting petitions, signatures to go into the federal uh, court case uh, for what some of the requirements are for Lynn to do with water quality and outfalls having a safety plan when you have flooding, that you have signage throughout the community, that uh, you have public input and participation. And we hold meetings with businesses and people like you with the water and sewer here so that they can meet the CSO requirements, the nine principles, the law, federal law, that they're supposed to have meetings with you and get your input on Stacy Brook and other areas. And we're not in compliance with that. We haven't done that. We have scheduled for the large project, we're gonna do one meeting, and it's at the holiday time, Christmas, Hanukkah, et cetera, when nobody will show up. <laughs> but the Stacy Brook, uh, at our last meeting, we found out that the person we hired to do the monitoring, the monitoring was not monitoring. So it's been down, I don't know how long, a long extended period of time, and it was not recording information. So we did no reporting to EPA, DEP, as we're supposed to, the health department, et cetera, for quality. So we fired that contractor for not completing the contract as they're supposed to. We brought in a new contractor that's supposed to do real-time telemonitoring. So that will go right to the website. Anybody, including the staff, will be able to look and see what the water overflows are in real-time, because we weren't reporting them. We did a large project in that area to separate the area and take out illicit flows and cross-contamination so it wouldn't flow onto the beach. That project was stopped before completion uh, in part because of my help showing the engineering of putting a smaller pipe to convey the flows wasn't gonna work. And we found no data that would support they had a model of something that would work and they stopped the project. So we have partially separated areas and some that aren't. And so we need to start monitoring, seeing what's in there, and have a plan like Boston. Boston tells you, hey, the beach is good water quality today. This waterway is good quality. And we're supposed to do the same thing. We're supposed to have information in the item. We're supposed to have information online. You should be able to go to our website and see it on a daily basis. You should have signage down at the beach like another gentleman wisely said. Those are requirements we're supposed to do. Uh, so 
Stacy Brooke is on our radar. We're also supposed to do education in the schools. Every year it comes up, we're going to do it next year. Okay, and that's what our submittal is, to DEP. Well, next year has been here for a long time. We're not telling the kids stay out of the water. We're supposed to have an emergency response plan so that ambulances, fire, emergency response people know don't go these routes. If you have to bring people to a hospital, put out a fire, if there's a police incident, and have signage on these streets. If you see water, don't drive down the street. Just like Boston, we can learn a lot by following that plan. And that's what the residents of our community put into the federal court case along with me. So that's missing. We need to do it. But people drive this process. And you have a water and sewer, the open meetings to the public. As, <coughs> as long as I'm on that board, if a constituent comes to a meeting and they want to talk about a concern under new business, I'll hear you. So if you want to come and you want to share and improve your community, and have those beaches that we can walk on and enjoy. Like I just did for my son, he went running down there, he went into the Marines to be a doctor, and he did all his training down the beach, it was a nice place to do it. We'd like other people to be able to do it. <coughs> so this consent decree that if you go to the Department of Justice website, you'll be able to see it. If you research it online, uh, you'll be able to see the public comments online. That should be on our website so you can see it. It's not. The website keeps getting smaller, it should be bigger. Communities like you, we should have open mic for organized groups around water quality and wanting to do things with the girls club or whatever and give them some time at the commission so they can come up and they can do the stenciling projects and the education in the schools. And we can make sure the health department and other people make sure that water is safe. And that drives our economic engine. They're looking to put huge numbers of condos down the other end so people can drive up and use the beach. And we'll get a lot of tax base from that and build a good quality community like you're seeing built in other communities like Revere. So um, that was some of the things we came up with. I want to thank you all for being here tonight. Thank you. And keep plugging. You're doing, you're doing God's work. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. You guys ready now? Okay.